Well, Sean Strickland does not make things particularly easy on old jail, right? <laughs> I just want you guys to meet him. I really do. I really do. Even just in passing, I hope you see him and you're not intimidated, right? He's one of the guys that would intimidate you from coming up and saying hello. I hope you go and say hello. Strickland is not only not crazy, okay? Strickland's not only a decent guy, Strickland's a gentleman. That's not a word that you can just throw around. You want to. You want to be one yourself. But it's not one you can use. I put him as far as he's respectful. He's soft-spoken. I mean, I'm just sharing for you the Strickland that you're seeing, right? I would never come out of Busta Guy's gimmick ever, particularly one that's working this well. He just got starched, and he's returning to a main event on the worldwide leader of ESPN, right? I mean, like, things are going very well for Sean Strickland. But there's a level of crazy that goes too far. And he went to sink his teeth into the I'm crazy market, which I must admit for you, I never knew existed, right? I didn't know the everyman market existed when Roy Nelson came out and started rubbing his belly and growing his hair. Like, I didn't know that. I thought Roy's going to get teased. Roy's going to get laughed at. No, you know what Roy got for years? It was a standing ovation. That's what he got. But I would I would have had that one wrong. I would have predicted that wrong. I would have been on the school of camp of Roy, get a haircut. So I tell you that because I just simply didn't know there was a market out there. There's a main event guy, I'm talking about Sean Strickland, there's a main event guy who's taking the, I'm a, I'm a wild card, I'm a madman. And it turned out you guys are really into it. Like, it is really fun to watch. I see it from a different perspective because I know Sean and I care about Sean. And I don't want Sean to get in his own way, which is possible to do. It is possible to do. And I know what you're thinking. The UFC doesn't get into politics. I, I, I hear you on that. But it's ran by human beings that have their conscious level, which are the ones that tell you they don't get involved. But they have a subconscious level that they can't do anything about. They don't even know that it's happening. I mean, there is a level where Sean could go too far. Quite frankly, yesterday, Sean reeled it back in. I don't watch Sean interviews when my children are in the room. I just don't know what he's going to say. Now, by no means did he go G-rated, but I'll tell you, for a Sean interview, that media scrum he did yesterday, and it was so fun. It was so fun. There's an energy around him. There's an openness, a wildness. There's an authenticness. You know, people have argued that the reason you... Love Nate Diaz as much as you do is because he's real. He's just straight. It might be polite. It might not. It might be somewhere in between. But 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 here's the answer to your question. If I'm not going to tell you the truth, I just won't show up and do the interview, right? Like there is an authenticness that you can sense. So Sean comes out, and even though it's a bit of a care, even though it's a bit of an angle that he's playing up. There's some very interesting things, including this. You know, they'll they'll ask him about Jared Cannon. And I get I guess Sean's like a trash talking guy. I mean, I guess that's the category you put him in as trash talk. Well, not so fast. They asked him about his specific opponent. They asked him about Jared Cannon here, and he said, Man, this this guy is frightening. This guy is a handful. Now, Sean plans to go and stand up and trade with Cannon here. He plans to go out and kickbox. And I'm always surprised how many of you put Strickland into the category of great grappler. He's a kickboxer. He prefers to kickbox. He'll tell anybody that will listen he's going to go kickbox. But for some reason, when I continue to read on the dirt sheets, when I continue to read things said about him, over on the underground, which is a bunch of smart, legitimate fans on the underground, they do talk about that. They talk about his takedowns. They talk about his grappling. And it just surprises me. Because that's really not his bread and butter. And he talked about that with Jared. He talked about how frightening it was. He talked about, you know, the fears that he got because he's, you know, just got knocked out. But he said, I'll fight Pierre the same way. I just put this hand right here instead of leaving it down. It was an interesting comment. Like, I don't think he's going to buckle. I don't think he's going to wilt. On the idea, which happens to a lot of them, which is I got knocked out. I've got to change things. I just don't think that's going to happen with Strickland. And this is a tall order. I mean, Jared Cannon here got dealt off the bottom of the deck, for sure. But he also went 25 minutes. He also did it wide awake. He's also returning to a main event. I mean, it would be seemingly less 
pressure for Cannoneer. And I think that Sean Strickland, who was previously booked in a feature match, meaning scheduled for 15 minutes, for him to go to that into a main event against the number one contender coming off of a knockout, I think I just think it's a lot. And I think it would wilt most men. I don't think it's going to affect Sean Strickland, right? I mean, that's the good part to being crazy. That's the part they don't ever want to talk about. Fighting is very tough. The more intellectual the athlete is, the more he cannot, I think about other things, but not this. This I'm just going to go do. I'm not careless, but I care less than he does. It's beneficial. I think that Strickland was very fun. I think that you guys enjoyed him. I think the other side of that scrum is this is a very legitimate order. Both of these guys have been given a second life. They both lost their last fight, and they both returned to a main event. That is extremely rare, and it's hard to do. It's also appropriate. One lost to Izzy, the other lost to Piera. It's very appropriate that those guys don't stumble too far. However, when you catch an opportunity, lightning in a bottle expression, you don't catch it twice. If somebody falls down in this one, they're not returning to a main event. There's a lot of chips on the table. And in this situation between Strickland and Cannoneer, those chips are all in.